It's been a while since I got my foot in the door of professional software development. I can still remember that overwhelming feeling of relief and excitement when I finally got a call notifying me that I had been given a job offer to work as a full-time junior software engineer. But before I could get to that point, there were quite a few things that I needed to do. At the time, I had no other previous formal job experiences of any kind. I had just finished my master's degree in computer science, and I was looking to finally enter the working world. Even though I was always interested in programming and had some personal coding projects throughout the years, I quickly learned that it takes a bit more than that to stand out amongst thousands of fresh graduate and self-taught software developers, all eager to jumpstart their careers. I didn't exactly know what sort of domain I wanted to work in, so I figured I might as well apply to a wide range of companies, as long as the job post contained a tech stack that I was remotely exposed to and interested in. 37 applications later, I was finally able to score a job offer that I ended up taking. But before I even sent a single application, I've dedicated time to make sure I've covered some crucial components. Here are some of the things that I've learned throughout that time. As it turns out, most CVs follow a very similar pattern. You write a short description of yourself, list your skills, education, and experience. But what do you do if you have no prior formal employment history? Or at least anything that's relevant? What if you are a self-proclaimed developer that just graduated, or just finished a coding bootcamp or two? Here's an example of a similar CV that I used when applying. I've replaced the experience section entirely with a list of coding projects that I've completed beforehand. I made sure to include a short and straightforward description that includes the project's tech stack and focus. The most important point, however, is keeping your CV short. A big mistake that a lot of junior developers make when applying for their first job is trying to impress their potential employer with a long and super detailed CV that contains a lot of unnecessary info about them, just to make it seem more professional. Going into too much detail will work to your detriment. As a matter of fact, you usually have less than 10 seconds to catch the attention of whoever is going through your CV. Key information points should be placed somewhere that are super easy to see at a glance. It's a good rule of thumb to try and limit your CV to one page. There's no need to include anything more than that until you start applying for senior positions and have plenty of years of experience. In that case, it might start being difficult to fit everything into a single page. A portfolio website is a great way of showcasing your personal projects and make them seem a bit more professional. There are plenty of examples that you can find online that can help you structure your website, or just find some inspiration. Your portfolio website can substantially enhance your chances of standing out from the other applicants, especially if you are planning to apply to front-end or full-stack positions. But if you are mainly applying for back-end roles and don't want to spend that extra time learning any front-end skills, it is perfectly fine if you use a CMS like WordPress. Just make sure your web page is a valid SSL certificate. You don't want to discourage your potential employer from visiting your website by making it look highly suspicious. Also, having a custom internet domain helps. As long as it's something reasonable, of course. Git is the most popular distributed version control system and GitHub is the most popular Git repository hosting platform. Needless to say, any new developer should be familiar with Git and GitHub. Starting a GitHub page and building up your commit history early on is definitely an advantage that will give you a notable edge over the other applicants. This is also where you'll want to store your personal projects and showcase your most successful ones. If you want to take it a step further, you can consider contributing to some open source projects. Such contributions will definitely be beneficial to your CV.
cover letter for junior developers should serve as a means of conveying motivation to work in the company they are applying to. As a junior, writing long paragraphs about your many accolades and accomplishments doesn't hold much weight. It is therefore important to convey your willingness to learn new skills and adapt to your environment. Similarly to writing a CV, the rule here is to try and keep your cover letters short and sweet. Nobody has time to go through a novel about everything that led you to this moment. Also, keeping it shorter will allow you to write cover letters way more quickly. Try to stick to a reusable template structure that can be targeted at different companies with minimal effort. You want to reuse as much text as possible. Coding interviews suck. They are mostly just there to filter a large number of applicants. The vast majority of the time they will not test your actual ability to do your usual daily tasks as a software engineer. Especially the live coding interviews where there are like three people observing you as you try and reverse a linked list. And yet, it's part of the process. It's something that you just need to prepare for. I learned to treat it the same as studying for any other exam. Memorizing algorithms, learning data structures, preparing for common technical questions, and hoping for the best. Luckily, nowadays there are plenty of popular learning platforms that offer neatly structured courses that will provide any necessary resources. Heck, you could even ask ChatGPT to make you a personalized coding interview prep plan. It's just a matter of incorporating this study time into your daily routine and sticking to it. Usually you have to go through multiple interviews when applying for a job. There's the first screening call that can be with someone like your hiring manager or recruiter. Then you usually get to have a technical interview, or a few of them if you're unlucky like me. Sometimes companies will give you a take-home assignment instead, which is what I prefer. And then finally, if you're lucky enough, you get a call where you negotiate a possible offer. Oftentimes at the end of an interview, you'll get a chance to ask a few questions yourself. Coming up with interesting questions beforehand really sets you apart from the crowd and makes you more memorable. One of the questions that I would always ask is, what is the one thing that you wish you knew at the start of your software development career? Upon asking this question, it's almost as if the interviewer's eyes would light up. It's no secret, people love to talk about themselves. But more importantly, they would get to briefly reminisce about how the early days of their careers were like, and acknowledge the journey that they've been through. On top of that, they get a chance to share their wisdom to someone that is similar to them, albeit a few years in the past. Questions that showcase your interest in the company and their tech stack are good, but it's also a good idea to sprinkle in something a bit more personal. At the end of the day, this is a numbers game. The vast majority of my applications did not result in any response. Not even a rejection email. Apply as much as you can and be prepared for rejections or outright getting no response at all. Remember, everybody goes through this. Try not to get discouraged. It is quite normal to get well above 100 applications before getting any offers. But with some consistency, patience and a little bit of luck, you will surely succeed. Until next time, good luck and take care.